All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today's Tackle Tip Tuesday, um, it's kind of one of those things that's going to happen every year as long as you go ice fishing. And uh, if you're seeing this, obviously you've seen the thumbnail and the title, and it's it's all about ice fishing stuff right now. Um, I'm going to go over a few things, but the main thing today's Tackle Tip Tuesday is going to be on is uh, checking over your stuff that you use on a regular basis. So let's get started. Okay, so to start off, we're going to talk about the main thing today, and uh, it's one of the most important things, and I can obviously see I need to clean this thing a little bit better. I must not have left it okay at the end of the last season. I get kind of sidetracked going from season to season to season, but this is my buddy heater. Uh, this is just a regular buddy, portable buddy. Uh, it's simple. It's got the one tank fitting on here. Um, what I'm going to do is right now I'm going to see is if it will just start. Um, that's usually the first thing I do. So Okay, so this is going to be a little difficult to show you guys, but Okay, so first things first. See if you can get it to light. Make sure I don't melt my lights here. I'm going to turn off this light here and this one. Okay, so with these, I'm going to turn this off in a quick second, but I just wanted you guys to see, like, what I check for with my buddy heaters is just to make sure all those little ports are getting red. So evenly you know coming across to evenly um i could tell i do need to clean this a little bit just kind of touch it up a little bit but this is the first thing i like to do is just check and make sure all of those are still working the way they're supposed to let's cool down for a second before i play with it again but something kind of want to go over here is like that is just like splash back from water and there's a little bit of ash and uh build up down here this little grate comes off if you've never used one of these before you can pull that off i like to just wipe all that down with like a cleaning wipe and then wipe down the little connector down there a little bit uh, make sure that that whole area doesn't have anything built up in it uh you know just from using it last season it's cool to the touch now um I'm not going to do it on camera to bore you guys, but so I took the tank off and uh, I already did this, so I'm not going to try and do it on camera, but I kind of flipped it around, moved it around a little bit and uh, looked in and around it for cobwebs and stuff like that. And it did have a couple spider webs in there. So I, I went in and cleaned those out already. Uh, like I said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this off of here in a little bit and then clean around this and make sure everything on there is, uh, you know, clean. You already seen it. The the brick here is already displaying much better than uh, some of my other buddy heaters that I've beat up over the years. Um, this is perfectly new, clean, nothing wrong with it. So I can confidently say that after I clean this, I might even uh, run it one more time just to make sure. Uh, also, I might run it on my 20 pound tank just to make sure that everything runs together properly. But that is something you should do now now in october not when the snow is falling not when the lakes are freezing <laughs> now <laughs> so that's number one. Oh, and anybody that can see this right here this is one of the things that i want to give away so 
you guys didn't see that, that's too bad. But if you guys have been around for a while, you know once I hit 10,000 subs, I'm looking to do a really big winter giveaway. Um, I'm actually thinking what I would do is I'd probably give uh, one of those buddy heaters that tent that I was pointing out that if you could see it, you could see it. If you couldn't, you couldn't. You have to stick around. It's something that I just don't use that often anymore. Um, but it's it's a great two-person tent, and it's a great tent to start out with because it's a thermal. So if you're just getting into ice fishing, I want to hook you guys up with something that's really luxurious compared to what I had to start with, which wasn't a thermal tent. Um, the other thing, which you guys are probably, you may or may not understand it, but... So... Alright, so... <laughs> this is my auger and uh, it's got some cobwebs around it right now so that's my strike master I honestly think this is the best part about these things is this is just the, the power head is you know it's just hard to beat and then uh, those are the two batteries for it now with lithium batteries realistically let me see if it's so you guys just seen this. I just pulled that out. We got all green lights on that one. All green lights on that one. Let me see. Those ones look a little dim actually. Oh, no. No, they're the same. So I charged these up both of them I put them on my uh, my charger over here that guy I put them on my charger in uh, what was that June just to double check I, I charged both of them up and then I threw them in this case right here which is just a it's a, it's a, it's a can cooler but it, it works really good in the winter time to keep these both in there so I'm gonna put one back stick one in here this is really hard to do on camera. <laughs> okay, so on. Now let's test it. <laughs> you can't do this with your gas auger. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Lights both work on it still. It does look, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to excuse myself for this one. It does look like the the shaft on it gets a little rusty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean that up with some wire wool and uh, basically make it good as new. But otherwise, start your augers. <laughs> uh, the joke is the fact that I can do this in my house because I have the the Strike Master lithium 40 volt um if you guys have regular augers though like gas augers go start them you don't want to wait till it's the day you're like oh i gotta use my auger the ice is thick enough because obviously we both know you can hand auger you know you can hand auger two feet of ice i've done it but you know all the way out to like six inches so you do have a little bit of time in order to you know mess around and slack off i guess you would say um but the reason I'm doing this joke here is, one, I just wanted to make sure that my battery's good. I'm actually going to take this battery out and put the other one in there and make sure that one works good, too. Just so there's no, like, you know, iffiness. And then I'm going to clean it all up real good and then stick it back in my storage spot till first ice. But, as I was trying to say, you don't want to be waiting until, you know, you're out chasing fish like this guy over here. And you have two feet of ice and you need to drill through it and your power auger won't start or stay running. So that's a big thing people have a problem with is you'll you'll start your auger and you'll get it running. And you're like, that's fine. And you put it back on a shelf and then you take it back out later on when it needs to be used on the ice and there you go. You end up with a problem with something wrong with the carburetor, the fuel, oil, whatever. Maintain your stuff <laughs> is what I'm trying to help you guys out with. Uh, and right now is the time to do it. Sometime in October, 
every year you should go over all of the major components you need for ice fishing um it's dark out right now otherwise i would go start my machine but i did actually just run a tank well like a quarter tank through it with some sea foam um so i run premium gas in my machine my uh my squealer if you guys don't know what that is look through my uh ice fishing videos here and you'll actually see the squealer is my ice machine but it's a three-wheeler basically and what i did is all summer long i've been starting it like once or twice a month letting it run and then running uh sea foam through it and then i also do an oil change right before the season starts because it's a four stroke so i gotta do an oil change but these are things that you need to just really get on top of in october so if you see this and you know somebody who's a slacker about this stuff send this video to them i'm yelling at them not you <laughs> if you know what you're doing it's obviously you know what you're doing but uh i think that's basically the big the big ones are your auger your heater and your machine if you have one um if oh one thing though if you do have a hand auger one thing you should definitely be doing is checking your blades if they have any chips nicks or broken like i think my hand auger blades if i can remember right i think there's a chip out of one of them so i have to go buy uh, a new set of blades i might even just order some online um in the near future so that i have them you know so you're ready for it uh same thing with this uh i have my the actual auger part for that behind here so I'm going to look at these blades and double check and make sure they are good to go. And that's the, that's the thing. Like you, you just want to make sure that the major components of the stuff that you use on a regular basis in the, uh, during the ice season are at their peak. And then, uh, there are some other things that I want to go through, but I'm going to do a different video on them. This is just basically to get you on your primary stuff. Uh, check your tanks if you need new 20 pound tanks or you need new one pound tanks like that one I used on the uh, little buddy heater or the regular buddy heater um, All the stuff you can get ahead of time. So you're ready to go because nobody likes to be Panicked and that's what I'm trying to help you guys pre prevent uh, Nobody wants to be rushing and rushing and rushing to try and get on top of this whole thing when you could again You know got ahead and then you're the guy out on the ice first you're the guy out on you know the new fishing spot first you're the guy that's catching all the fish so you want to be that person you definitely want to be that person uh ready to go uh something else and if you guys don't haven't seen this video yet i have uh i have a charging station <laughs> for all my batteries um as you can see i'm charging one of these right now i use personally i use my flasher batteries all year round in my boat on my front fish finder because i actually have i have an lx7 and a m5 that i use in the winter time i'm gonna possibly be using my helix this summer or winter but either way charge your batteries you have to maintain your batteries and that's why i built this i actually have a video if you just go through uh, my other tackle tip tuesday videos uh about how i built this and like what i did to uh, make it you know more organized and stuff like that so you guys can do the same thing but obviously this is pretty simple stuff but it's the simple stuff that you always forget so i hope i helped remind some of you guys and like i said if you have friends or family that are just really slow to go and get it done send this to them i'm, I'm telling you guys the okay your buddy if he sent this to you that's your cue to get your stuff ready to go for the ice season obviously if you can't tell i'm excited for the ice season I've, we got some fall fishing to do here but this is what this is what it's all about get ready now so that later you can have fun and not have to worry about anything going wrong all right so as simple as it all is we're gonna just we're gonna just leave it at that it's as simple as that get your stuff ready be ready get out on the ice do it safely i got a bunch of ice videos coming your way um it's gonna be nuts this season i i'm literally gonna try and do something i'm not gonna promise it yet but if you guys are here if you're not new here you know what's up but if you are new please just remember to